Hey, Mr. Belvedere, what do you think of this campaign slogan? You're in good hands with Heather. What are you running for, class chiropractor? <laughs> Oh, and then I think your slogan should reflect what you'll do as treasurer. Right. What will I do? Well, I assume that you'll supervise the collection of class dues and exercise pecuniary guidance over the allocation. Oh. Well, then how's this slogan? Heather gives great pecuniary guidance. Much better. Mr. Wait, Angela. Before you say my name, think. Think about what, Mr. Bilgewater? <laughs> Never mind. Heather, I came to ask you a favor. Will you be my campaign manager? Oh, what are you running for? Class treasurer. Oh. But that's what I'm running for. Great, we can run together. <laughs> Angela, it doesn't work like that. Oh. So uh, maybe only one of us should run. Which one? Oh, I don't know. Uh, whoever has the best chance to win. Mr. Belvedere, who would you vote for, her or me? Who else is running? <laughs> Mom, you still want this? Honey, that's my mink. Yeah, can I sell it? No. <laughs> well, you don't need it. You're always saying how dead never takes you anywhere. What's the scam, Wes? It's for my school auction. We gotta raise money to help the hungry. Hmm. Well, you could donate a batch of my homemade fudge. Oh, they're not that hungry. <laughs> well, we gotta come up with something. Howie Huffnagle's bringing in a color TV, and Tommy Greenberg's dad is giving away a free gynecology exam. <laughs> I don't know. What do we have around here that we could give away? What about him? How about you? What about me? We could auction you off. You know, you could be somebody's butler for a day. Wesley, I don't think I like the idea of being put on the block like a prize steer. You probably wouldn't get much for him anyway, Wes. Unless you sell him by the pound. <laughs> Oh, we're going to stay here and work on our campaign posters. Yeah, even though we're running for the same office, we're still going to help each other. Oh, that's very magnanimous, Angela. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Angela, we got a lot of work to do. Come on, Mr. Bowder, we're going to be late. I'm coming. Hey, check out Jeeves here. You like it? I wore this every day during my service with the royal family. How come you never wear that around here? Be serious. <laughs> I think you look very nice. Yeah, I bet Dad will get a bundle for you. What do you mean? Didn't Wes tell you? I'm the auctioneer. Yeah, my teacher asked him because in Pittsburgh he's almost a celebrity. In that case, I'm almost impressed. <laughs> going once, going twice. Sold to the man in the blue blazer for fifteen dollars. You can call Dr. Greenberg for your appointment. Have fun. <laughs> Our next item, a limited edition on crushed velvet, was donated by the Steel Town Inn just before it was closed down for prostitution. Uh, do I hear an opening bid? Ten bucks. Okay. Do I hear fifteen? Now we're cooking twenty. Uh, did I mention the horns light up? Twenty. Twenty-five. All right, going once, going twice. Sold to the art lover in the front row. Our uh, 
Next item is a true original, folks, that'll add a touch of class to any home. Come on out, big guy. This is Mr. Belvedere, an authentic English butler. Do a little spin for the folks, Jeeves. <laughs> he's got manners, he's got style, he's got a snotty attitude. He'll make your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, clean your house, and solve all your personal problems. Can I have a bid? Perhaps you should mention I worked for the royal family. Did you hear that, folks? He worked for the royal family. Three bucks. Okay. Do I hear three fifty? I bid ten dollars. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Kevin. Thirty-five. Fifty bucks. Okay, fifty. Going once. Going twice. I bid five hundred dollars. $500. Okay. Going once, going twice. Congratulations, ma'am. You have yourself a butler. The eggs were delicious. Thank you, madam. May I freshen your tea? Thank you. May I spread Madame's marmalade? Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, do you treat the Owens family like this? I usually throw them some raw meat and stand back. <laughs> More fruit compote? It's, it's all so wonderful. Why don't you sit down and join me? Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't. It wouldn't be proper. Oh. Oh. Would it be proper if we chit-chat? Well, perhaps I could bend the rules. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I never talked to a butler before. Well, perhaps Madam would like to ask me about my years of service with the royal family. Not really. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> so, uh, did you ever spend any time like this with the Queen? Yes, but only when the Prince was out of town. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I get you anything else, Mrs. Cartwright? Please, call me Julia. Very well. Julia. Good. Now, what can I call you? Mr. Belvedere. Excuse me. <laughs> Done. Vote for Angela. Well, that's it? Well, what's your say? Vote for Heather. She's real together. Well, I couldn't think of anything that rhymed with Angela. Except maybe tangerine. <laughs> Look, Angela, why don't you rhyme something beside your name? Like what? Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, Angela in charge of your money. Hey, that's really funny. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> What do you mean it's really funny? <laughs> What's so funny about it? Look, Angela, I'm just trying to help you get some votes. I mean, hardly anybody knows who you are. Oh, excuse me, Miss Popularity. <laughs> Let's face it, Angela, you're the underdog. And she should know. She's a real dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a soda. No, thank you. Maybe she's right. Maybe I am a loser. Hey, if you want to beat Heather, all you got to do is dig up some dirt. How am I going to do that? <laughs> Hi, honey. Hey, Marsh. What you doing? I'm just trying to figure out dinner. Now, what sounds better? Chicken croquettes with raspberry sauce or Portuguese meatloaf? Gee, honey, they both sound so good. Why don't we just order a pizza? <laughs> I'm just thinking of you. You probably got a lot of studying to do. Mm -mm. For once, I'm all caught up. <laughs> Great. Would you like another slice? No, thank you. But it was delicious. I certainly have enjoyed our day together. Yes, it's been a pleasure serving you. <laughs> now, uh, 
Is there anything else before I leave? Can I buy another hour? I'm not that kind of butler. <laughs> no, no. I'm serious. W would you consider making this a permanent arrangement? I'm very flattered. But I'm afraid not. I'll give you twice what the Owens are paying you. That would almost be minimum wage. <laughs> you wouldn't have to do much. Julia, that's very generous of you. But no. All right. But would you at least join me for a little farewell toast? I have some very nice sherry. Certainly. To a happy future for both of us. You like it? It's very smooth. And potent, too. <laughs> well, I must be on my way. <laughs> this does go to your head very quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe you ought to sit down. I don't know why I feel so light-headed. It's probably the sedative taking effect. What? I slipped you a Mickey. I hope you don't mind. Mm. Thanks, Wes. I needed that. Good morning, Dad. Just checking the flash. Well, get in here and eat your breakfast. By the way, you seen Heather? I think she's taking a shower. <laughs> Honey, are you okay? You tossed and turned all night. Uh, I had this horrible nightmare that something was chasing me. Ooh. Probably a Portuguese meatloaf. <laughs> was it chasing you too? <laughs> hey, where's Belvedere? Isn't he upstairs? No, I thought he'd be down here. No. Gee, I wonder where he could be. Hey, maybe he got lucky. <laughs> Good morning. Rise and shine. I don't think that's possible. I'm sorry, but that's the only way I could keep you here. Julia, what do you want of me? Just some company. The ropes aren't too tight, are they? No, they're just the way I like them. <laughs> Aren't we grumpy? Look, Mrs. Cartwright. Julia. Look, Julia, pardon my curiosity, but how long are you going to keep me like this? Not long, just until you feel at home. And when I feel at home, I can leave? Why would you want to? Well, look, Julia, I'll have to be untied for a little while. I need to get cleaned up. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I did this for Daniel every day up until the end. Look at this. Another hostage taken in the Middle East. What's the world coming to? Well, enough of this gloom and doom. What do you want to do now? Scratch my nose. Oh, Lynn. <laughs> How about some music? I bet you didn't know I played the piano. Mm -hmm. You're full of surprises. Daniel and I had some wonderful sing-alongs. <laughs> You can take the moon, gather up the stars, and the robins that sing merrily. Put them in a box, tie them with a ribbon, and throw them in the deep blue sea. Sing along, Lynn. La da 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 da. -da. I'll get it. 
I'm coming. Open wide. <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, Mr. Owens, what can I do for you? We haven't heard from Belvedere. We thought you might know where he is. Oh, I'm sorry. He left here last night. He did? Oh, dear. I hope nothing's happened to him. Ah, oh, don't worry. Something that big is bound to turn up sooner or later. <laughs> now, where were we? <laughs> now, if you don't know the words, Lynn, hum along. You can take the moon and gather up the stars and the rock. What's that going to kill you? Dad, what happened? Wesley took a picture of me getting out of the shower, and Angela stuck it all over the cafeteria. The naked truth about Heather Owens. Vote Angela for treasurer. It's a funny place for a mole. <laughs> you are in big trouble, young man. I'm back. What happened? Belvedere's not over Mrs. Cartwright's. Does she know where he is? Nope. She said he split last night. Oh, I wonder where he could be. I bet she did something to him. Wes. She's a real weirdo. Nobody ever goes to her house. We're even afraid to vandalize it on Halloween. <laughs> Maybe we should drive around the neighborhood, see if he's at any of his favorite hangouts. Okay, but that's a lot of donut shops. <laughs> Ready or not, here I come. How do I look? Lovely. Pardon me for not standing. I made your favorite for dinner. Baked Virginia ham with raisin salts. That's not my favorite. Well, it will be. <laughs> now, all we need is something from the wine cellar. Do you have a request? Anything but sherry. Oh. <laughs> Wesley, is that you? I'm saving you. That's very thoughtful of you. Now go away. <gasps> Stop. I want to be left tied up. What do you mean? You like this kind of stuff? <laughs> I'll explain later. Now go home. I can't. I got grounded for taking dirty pictures of Heather. I had to sneak out. If I show up without you, I'll really be in trouble. You'll be in worse trouble if you don't go. Now, scat! Boy, try and rescue someone. <laughs> I hope you like Bordeaux. Mm-hmm. Now, how about some atmosphere? On our silver anniversary... Daniel took me to a lovely hotel in Pottstown. <laughs> we had dinner, danced, and the band played this just for us. Then they put a spotlight on us, and everyone applauded. We were married 42 years. We never slept apart. Very few people can say that. Do you dance? Not at the moment. Daniel was a wonderful dancer. That is, until he had the stroke. Then he, he couldn't do much of anything. I took care of him day and night, but I, uh, I didn't mind. Why won't these stupid things like? God, what am I doing? You must hate me. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I'll just untie you. That won't be necessary. <laughs> You're loose. Yes. I have been for the last hour. You mean you, you could have walked away any time you want? Mm hmm Why did you stay? Hmm. I'd rather like a close shave every now and then. 
I bet you think I'm crazy. No. Just a little lonely. So, uh... Are you going to call the police? I think there are better people for you to talk to. Anyway, you didn't transport me across state lines. <laughs> well, I, I guess you want to be going now. Uh, no. Not yet. Why? What are you going to do? Well, at the very least, I think you owe me a dance. at school. We were having a debate in assembly and for no reason at all, Angela attacked me. No reason? All I did was call her a dumb bimbo. For Angela, that's almost... together no more trips to the mall i can find other friends so can i good all right heather you clean this up and angela you get out you dumb bimbo hey, you can't talk to her like that oh no well if you don't like it you can get out too all right i will come on angela let's go to the mall yeah nobody's gonna tell us we're not to go with who see you mr bullwinkle <laughs> After testing the political waters and nearly drowning, Angela and Heather are inseparable once again. One bright note, however, neither is speaking to me. <laughs> Julia called to say she's doing much better now she started counseling. I don't know why women find me so irresistible, but eventually they get over me. Except, of course, for Sophia. <laughs>